So uh, I'm an actual engineer by training, and a couple of years ago, I, I led a study, uh, this policy study, and today I I'd like to just go over the, uh, the essence of it as a basis for discussion because it's very relevant to the development of the Greater Bay Area. Now, let me just see if I can. Ah. So, I, I have a copy of this uh, for those of you who would like to have a look at the end. Uh, but basically, it's the first cross-border independent study uh, conducted by the Institute of Public Policy HKUSD in collaboration with the Chinese Academy of Engineering and the Hong Kong Academy of Engineering Sciences. And, uh, you know, it seems strange that Hong Kong really doesn't have, when we conduct this study, it doesn't really have a, a policy on INT. And in the past couple of years, things have been moving at a very rapid pace. And so I'll just briefly explain the background of this study, the main recommendations. And then uh, during the discussion, uh, maybe a bit about the, uh, so, so the, the study was actually took a couple of years, jointly with the Chinese Academy of Engineering. And then in May 2017, there was a, a forum, an open forum, where a lot of the findings were finalized. Uh, and then there's this report uh, in October 2017. Uh, so, uh, you know, in a, in a way, this study was led by, a, how should I say, a group of uh, uh, leaders in, in engineering and science and, and, and different sectors who have grown with the Hong Kong s and ecosystem and who felt there's a strong need that there, there must be a fundamental change. So some of the findings are kind of uh, interesting. So it's the first ind independent study, and, and uh, I work closely with Professor Sharif on this. And so the objectives, as you can see, is to, um, uh, uh, well, study the synergistic integrative development of INT, innovation and technology in Hong Kong and the Pearl River Delta and beyond, and to offer policy recommendations and to identify potential areas with, with critical mass for strategic development. And the question is, what does it take for Hong Kong to transform to another level of performance in innovation and technology, and how best to collaborate with our mainland partners? In fact, when we started, this is way before GBA, when Xi Jinping announced this uh, initiative. The Chinese Academy of Engineering actually asked the question, what technology does Hong Kong really have? that we can commercialize. In fact, it seems they don't know anything about what Hong Kong has to offer, and vice versa. So, so really, there, there's a lack of communication, and as I said, there's, up to this point, no independent, joint, cross-border study. I mean, be, the, the think tanks, our Hong Kong Foundation so has previous studies, but it's more from the Hong Kong point of view. So uh, this, Report is actually available at uh, HKUST e-bookstore uh, freely. And it serves as a good introduction to the subject for those of you who want to acquaint yourself with the background of all this. So what did we do? Well, we did, uh, uh, now, back in 1997, there was a very famous study called, but done by MIT, actually, made by Hong Kong, 1997. And that study actually is a book that recommend a number of recommendations that actually most of them weren't, weren't quite, uh, I would say, a lot of key recommendations remain to until the, the point of this study. And then we, we interviewed through our network, we interviewed 37 leaders, key stakeholders, uh, captains of industry, heads of universities, head of the stock exchange, et cetera. So, so we really interview everybody throughout the ecosystem. And uh, you know, Napa High and the, and, and the team actually ask the same questions, a series of questions in terms of what does it take. Uh, because up to this point, it wasn't obvious. Hong Kong actually as a society as a whole embraced the idea of innovation and technology. In fact, personally, I think the acceptance of innovation and technology as a driver of the economy has been, in Hong Kong at least, a very recent phenomenon. So, but things have been happening at a very, very rapid pace in the past two years. So, 
So what we did is, uh, well, uh, we, we actually uh, did a detailed analysis of the R&D strength of Hong Kong universities and commercialization status prompted by this question from the Chinese Academy of Engineering. Because in our interviews, it actually struck us that even our industrialists, very leaders in society, are not aware of the strength of our local universities in terms of the ability, the potential to tap innovation technology. And, and I think you can read this, but it was that this, this was supported by the Central Policy Unit also. So I think the background of all this is, whilst in the past 10 years, actually different universities in Hong Kong, in fact, all the universities in Hong Kong, I would say five or six, have established uh, IER platforms, uh, you know, uh, uh, kind of education innovation platforms in Shenzhen and Guangdong province. And over the, the, the 10 years, I mean, you can read the numbers. I mean, many, many uh, projects have been conducted and so on. Up to this point, this is three years ago. And yet, we don't really have a policy, a, a, a kind of integrated policy to facilitate this. And so there are a lot, a lot of bot bottlenecks in terms of the flow of uh, talents, in terms of the flow of uh, uh, capital, in terms of flow of research money at the time of this study. So there were a lot of bottlenecks and so on. So, so we, we did uh, some major findings through this study. And, and, and I think, the, the, to me, the most important finding is the first one, is that there is a consensus among the society because innovation technology is not just government, not just university, not just uh, industry, it's the whole society thing. And there was a consensus, there is a consensus expressed by leaders throughout the ecosystem that Hong Kong is desperately in need of innovation technology. And before we did the study, uh, we wouldn't assume that because Hong Kong has always had this, this philosophy of high tech, high year, low tech, low year, you know. Like, uh, you know, like uh, you, you, you're dangerous, you get burned if you go into high technology. So, so I think uh, there, 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 there's uh, this uh, uh, realization, this, this findings across all uh, uh, sectors. And innovation is needed not just to create high value added new industries of tomorrow, but also to upgrade traditional industries, okay? And, uh, and uh, the R&D, so, so the, the recognition of the need for innovation was, was uh, very compelling, I mean, as, of, uh, as revealed by this study. Uh, another point that as we were doing this study, Hong Kong is still always kind of saying that we are the super connector. But if you look at the reality, where rapidly we are, in fact, a, a lot of uh, members of our team would argue Hong Kong is super connected no more. And really, we really have to, to face the reality and uh, really have to, uh, because without, without a coherent policy and real com commitment, Hong Kong is left further and further behind uh, other, other parts of the region. Okay? And, and we leave ourselves to be marginalized. I think, so that, that was a very loud and clear from the, and, 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 and how to, uh, uh, maintain Hong Kong's uh, competitive advantages and position, how to develop INT synergistically with GBA, which is the title of this study, it is a very important uh, kind of thing. Now, if you look at Hong Kong in the past uh, 20, 30 years, really, in terms of innovation technology, the only really outstanding change since the MIT 1997 report is really the emergence of internationally recognized universities. Whether it's world class or not depends on the, but at least internationally recognized uh, universities. And, and this is a fact that uh, a lot of people are not, at least in, in different sectors of society, are not actually uh, very familiar, I would say. And throughout this study, we've collated 38 success stories of R&D and commercialization of from the five or six universities. And to qualify on a list, it has to have real innovation, won international prizes, prestigious international prizes, and also commercialized, commercialized. So this is just a slice. And in fact, uh, if you look up on the web, this report, it, it has a, so, 
That's why in one, in one place you see, in fact, Hong Kong has a lot to, um, to be proud of. So, uh, uh, the, now, whilst, as we were doing this study, whilst we don't really have any policy, but in the eyes of the Shenzhen government, things have been changing in the past 10, 15 years gradually. And, and to see this, you see these statistics. Actually, uh, Hong Kong University have established, uh, as I said, the, the IEL basis in Shenzhen with uh, 400 million investment. Uh, this is in in kind of independent from the government. And 40% of the, 65% uh, of the nice, very prestigious projects, and 40% uh, of the kind of government level projects are actually led by Hong Kong academics. So although Shenzhen, when it started with, didn't really have any universities, so to speak, they have a virtual universities, they attract people with policy. And, and you see that, that with that, uh, they also, a lot of our uh, uh, professors have startup companies like Google, uh, DJI, uh, et cetera, in, in Shenzhen. And, and so, so regardless of the policy, people, uh, different uh, local ac academics and universities have been, uh, you know, uh, active uh, in, in the development without a policy. So the idea is Hong Kong urgently needs a coherent long-term policy for integrative INT development, and basically there's an inadequate uh, development. Uh, there's a need for rejuvenation of the INT uh, policy. And what's more important, there's an outcry if you interview the industry, if you interview different sectors. There's an outcry uh, among, for commitment from the very top. And, and this is at that time of the study about two years, uh, two, two and two, three years ago. So this is, a, and, 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 and there's a, also uh, some comments on the ineffective use of in, uh, in, inadequate, the, the research funding is inadequate, but it's also ineffectively used. And so there's a lot of uh, these recommendations. So, so I, I think I will, in, in view of the time, I will very uh, just give a summary of the. I will just give a summary of the major recommendations rather than go through it point by point. I had intended to uh, go through it point by point. Uh, so, uh, so, sorry, I. So basically, the policy recommendation is this. Government leadership at the highest level is, is necessary to rejuvenate IND development. And I would say most of the recommendations uh, resonate, resonate uh, with, with the government. Professional and technical expertise necessary in government decision making, uh, that uh, remains to be seen, uh, how to act on it. But support for, for technology innovation Enhancement of recognition for INT contribution, nurturing of human resources and talents in INT, and the identification of strategic areas for collaboration in Hong Kong and the Greater Bay Area, uh, and the development of integrated collaboration. So, so actually, uh, actually, uh, we we did. Uh, I want to go back a little bit through this study. We did actually forward it a, a, a through the Chinese Academy of Engineering. Uh, a proposal to the central government, and the different different uh, 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 stakeholders also submitted recommendations. But but beyond this study, actually, we've seen uh, things happening at a very rapid pace. And, and, and one uh, one of course is uh, this study was actually formally released, uh, although it was dated uh, October 2017, but it was March 2018. And it was in May last year that Xi Jinping actually had this policy directive to encourage uh, the incorporation of s and talents in Hong Kong into all, all phases of the s and ecosystem in China. So that was a very big, uh, I mean, after that things, things changed. Uh, and of course, Hong Kong government, if you see the recent budget, uh, instead of 0.74%, uh, it's very bold. Double the R&D investment, double, we, we recommended 3%, but it's just double uh, the budget in five years. And this is, well, there are many, many initiatives. Double the basic research funding, 
uh, 16 billion for uh, revamping the research infrastructure, identification of AI and robotics and healthcare as two clusters, innovation of clusters, etc. And also, uh, I would say the postdoc fellowship is also to encourage the young to provide employment for the young and tax in uh, incentives for the for the um, industry. So, so these are all actually um, uh, uh, kind of. Uh, if you can, at least this is factually, this is what happened in, in, the, in the past year. So I, I have a number of uh, things to share, but I think I would wait till the uh, discussion session. I do have a few slides, uh, because what I see personally is in the Greater Bay Area, there has been tremendous momentum in Dongguan, in Nansha, uh, in Guangzhou. They're all more active than and I would say that, that Hong Kong, uh, not, I'm not uh, being critical or anything, but, but and you see uh, our government has been, has been you know, very active in all these measures, but, but there are challenges and, and in fact also opportunities. And I think uh, I, I would like to learn from everybody present in terms of how to move forward. Thank you.